A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him, حدثني بأمر أعتصم به. Talk to me of something that I should hold firm on it, that I uphold firmly. The Prophet ﷺ told him what? قل ربي الله ثم استقم. Say, Allah is my Lord. This is the shahada, the declaration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king, is the creator of everything that exists. Say that, believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, then be upright, then remain firm upon that saying. After shahada comes istiqamah. You know the scholars would say what? Al-ibra laysat biman sabaq. Al-ibra biman thabat. Allahu Akbar. They would say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will determine your destiny, whether inshallah Jannah or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from hellfire, not because you became righteous before others, no, but by the quality of being steadfast, steadfastness upon the, the straight path. That's why every day, every salah in our prayer, we say what? Don't we say that every day? Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us already? Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us already by making us Muslims, alhamdulillah? But the meaning according to some, you know, interpretation, it doesn't just mean the guidance. It means, oh Allah, I'm asking you to show me the way, to take me there and to keep me firm upon it. That's why we keep repeating it. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Another scholars would say, Tariqullahi taweel. The, the, the journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is long. But it's not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not determine your destiny, whether Jannah or Hellfire, by reaching the destination, but rather by dying upon the destination. While you are on the straight path all the time, you passed away, that's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to Jannah. Steadfastness. And by the way, even the Prophet sallallahu imagine this with me. Even the Prophet sallallahu was commanded by Allah to remain steadfast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ Remain firm upon the path as you have been commanded. Who is receiving this commandment? The Prophet of Allah, the best of all selections, the best of all prophets. How about you and me? May Allah save us. When this verse was revealed, when this chapter was revealed, the Prophet sallallahu said what? شَيَّبَتْنِي هُود The chapter of Hud has made my hair go gray because of the heaviness of the message. Because it's one of the challenging manners that we need to keep. One of the most difficult manners is to remain firm, consistent. It's difficult, but it's possible. Now, one of the stories that I will end up with, inshallah, is the story of a man by the name of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi. Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi was one of the companions who fought in a certain battle during the, the region of Umar ibn Khattab. And he and a large number of the companions were caught by a Christian king and they were jailed. And then they brought Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi to the Christian's court, the Christian king's court, and he told him, embrace Christianity and I will give you half of my wealth. Just embrace Christianity. So Abdullah ibn Hudhafa, look how strong, firm and steadfast he was. He told him, Wallahi, by Allah, if you give me all of your wealth and the wealth of the entire creation, I will never leave the religion of Muhammad for a blinking of an eye. This is how he produced leaders. This is how he produced people who are firm with very, very clear vision. Jannah is there. I can see it. I can smell it. How could I give up that for money? And look, Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi could have, may Allah please with him, he could have easily said, no, thank you for your offer. I'm not interested. He could have said that. But look how firm, look how the choices of word he had. By Allah, I will never leave the religion of Muhammad وسلم, by a blinking of an eye. He told him, okay, I'm going to give you my daughter in marriage. He said, who told you that I wanted to marry? <laughs> He's one of the stubborn companions. May Allah please with him. They jailed him in a cell and they sent after him a prostitute to seduce him inside his cell. And he ran from her within his cell. Radiallahu anhu arda. To an extent that the lady felt bored and she left the cell. She said, he's a rock. He's a rock. He's not moving. They prevented him from eating and drinking for three days until his neck, radiallahu anhu arda, was twisted from weakness. Then they provide him with pork and wine. He didn't touch them. And they ask him, aren't you hungry? You're going to die. Eat something. He say, by Allah, in my condition, pork and wine becomes halal because that's the only option I have. But I don't want the Christian king to say, that a companion from the Prophet ﷺ have tasted the haram. They hung him on a tree and the king told him, just shoot arrows toward his directions, but don't hit him, just to scare him off. And he was firm. Imagine with me, he's on the tree, handcuffed, and the arrows coming left and right, and he was firm. He was firm. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasul. They brought him and few of his companions and they told him, embrace Christianity now, otherwise we will throw you in a boiling oil. Imagine this. And 
the king ordered two of his companions to be thrown in a boiling oil. And Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi was saying that when they dipped them in, I saw their bones are floating on the surface of the oil. So he cried, radiallahu anhu arda. So they thought that they have broken him. They informed the king that Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Sahmi is crying now. He said, okay, bring him to me. Bring him now to me. Are you ready now to embrace Christianity? He said, no. By Allah, I will never leave the deen of Muhammad for a blinking of an eye. So why did you cry? If that's the case, why did you cry? He said, when I looked at my companions being killed, being thrown in a boiling oil, I remembered I have got only one soul. If you dip me, if you killed me, that's it. Once and that's all. So I wished to have a hundred souls and you would kill me a hundred times and then every time I will die for the sake of Allah. That's how firm, steadfast he was. So the king lost, lost hope. So he told him, okay, all right, kiss my head. You see, kiss my head and I will let you go free. He said, no. He said, even I will not allow you to kiss my head. Radiallahu anhu arda. He said, okay, kiss my head and I will let you go free and I will free 60 of, you know, the Muslim prisoners. He said, no. Okay, kiss my head and I'll let you go free and with you 120 prisoners. He said, no. Okay, kiss my head, please. <laughs> and I'll let you go free and with you 300 of the companions. He said, okay, he agreed. He was doing this to free his friends. And he went up to the king and he kissed his forehead. And he was freed with 300 companions. And even the king gave them some concubines as gifts. <laughs> and on the way, some people, some people started talking about this incident that Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Samir had kissed the Christian king. They were a bit, you know, sad that Abdullah had done such an act. So Umar ibn Khattab heard it. It came to his attention that some people are talking about Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Samir. So he came in public and he said, Wallahi, it is a duty upon every Muslim to kiss the forehead of Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Samir and I will do it first. And he kissed the head, the forehead of Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Samir. When we get to Jannah, inshallah. When we get there, we're going to look for Abdullah ibn Hudhaf al-Samir radiyallahu anhu arda and kiss his forehead may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people of jannah